This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Our guest tonight is Make contributing writer and chemist Sean Reagan. His latest article on extracting fragrances from plants using steam appears in Make Volume 22, and he frequently writes reviews for the Toolbox column as well. He joins us via Skype from Austin, Texas. Hi, Sean. How are you? Nice to hear you. We're going to raise up your audio a little more so we can hear you. And um, so you're a chemist. Are you classically trained? What's your background in science? Uh, I have uh, an undergraduate degree in chemistry, and I have a master's degree in organic chemistry. I hear that that's the hard kind. Oh, look, we already have our first cat appearance on the show. That's great. What's your cat's name? Mooney. Mooney. So Mm -hmm. cute. Cool. Well, so we're so glad to have you here today. We want to talk about your laser microscope project, but first I was wondering if you could help us get started on our chemistry demo, which uh, takes a little bit of time to accumulate our flammable gases. Mm-hmm. Um, it's from our, our book, The Illustrated Guide to Home Chemistry Experiments by uh, Robert Bruce Thompson, and um, we're going to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. So the first thing you'll need is um, a beaker with a 9-volt battery, and um, I hot glued my battery to the bottom of the beaker. It makes it easier so it doesn't fall over later. And then you need two test tubes, one to collect the hydrogen and one to collect the oxygen. And then um, you need some kind of ionic salt. And um, the experiment in the book says to use magnesium sulfate, but it also says that baking soda is an appropriate uh, substitution. So that's what I did because that's what I have at the house. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the, I'm going to fill the, the beaker with the solution, put the test tubes one over each terminal of the battery, and it's going to collect the gases. Now, what's happening is that the electrons uh, and the electricity stored in the battery are giving off and taking away electrons from the water solution, the ions in the water solution, allowing them to exist stably on their own. Um, and then they're going to collect in here, and then we'll be able to tell the difference between them later by setting them on fire. So I have this big bucket of uh, baking soda water, basically, uh, that I prepared in advance. And then I'm just going to dunk these in. This is the easiest way for me to show this to you. And then stand it upright and bring it over to the pie pan. And then you can see, if we zoom in now, you'll be able to see um, the bubbles forming of hydrogen and oxygen off of each thing. So the the negative end, the cathode of the battery, is going to provide, it's going to take away electrons uh, from the hydrogen ions, correct me if I'm wrong here, Sean, at any point, and um, collect over top of the cathode, and then the oxygen is going to collect over the anode of the positive side, which is over here. Can you see the bubbles? Yeah, look at that. Can you zoom in anymore? Did I get that right, Sean, or is there anything you would add within your professional opinion? No, you got it right. Awesome. Well done. Okay, so that's going, and what will happen is the uh, hydrogen will collect Uh, twice as fast as the oxygen, and um, hopefully we'll be able to see that a little better later. Right now they're just sort of both small bubbles at the top. I'm going to put this ring stand over here just to lean the test tubes against, and I'll slide this out. So we're going to move back. We'll see what we've collected. We haven't collected enough to set on fire, but that's okay. We're Martha stewarding it here, and we made one in advance. So here's our gas that we've got collected. Maybe if we zoom out our close-up camera, you guys can see, or I'll just remove this ring stand. You can see now at the top... Um, of the test tubes, we've collected two different amounts of gases. Um, This one's the hydrogen, and this one's the oxygen. And um, they'll continue to collect in these test tubes, one about twice as fast as the other one. And uh, so, got that set up. I'm just going to set it aside so it can keep doing its thing. Now, the safety precaution for this, the solution's not dangerous. 9-volt battery, I mean, if you stick your hand in there, it's like getting shocked, like sticking a 9-volt battery in your tongue. It's not really that dangerous. And then, um, The dangerous thing I did notice when I was looking through other people who were doing this project is that, um, sure, hydrogen's flammable, but it's it's not mixed with any fuel gas. And when it mixes with air to combust when I light it on fire, it's uh, just going to be combining with the oxygen in the air as it reacts. Um, If I were to collect both gases in one test tube, there'd be oxygen and hydrogen together. The the oxygen's providing the fuel for the hydrogen to burn, and I could have an explosion on my hands. So I'm not going to collect both gases in one test tube, uh, one each. Does that sound like an appropriate safety warning, Sean? Uh, yeah, I think it's a really safe experiment that you're doing, but, you know, err on the side of caution. Really safe. So this is the one I made earlier. Let's get in the close-up. I think we'll probably want to do the close-up for the actual ignition. So these I, I saved earlier, and I marked them positive and negative. So I expect, I expect the positive one to be the oxygen and the negative one to be the hydrogen. Now... Um, I should be able to tell the difference by the way they burn. Hydrogen shouldn't make a light. It should just make a noise, a loud pop when it ignites. And the oxygen should burn 
brightly. Does that sound about right, Sean? Well, the point of fact, the oxygen's not burning. It's causing the, I mean, whatever, it, you're, I assume you're using a match there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's causing, you know, the, the wood in the match to burn much more vigorously in the presence of oxygen. So ah. Basically right, except to say that oxygen is burning is technically incorrect. Right, okay, good. Glad we have an expert on board to help us out, make sure we get it right. Okay, so the hydrogen then is going to be the real fun deal. So are you guys ready? I don't know if you're ready. Tell me if you're ready in the chat. You ready to see some things light up? Oh, I think they're ready. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, the thing is, oh, I, I got to separate the test tubes, that's right, um, so that they don't light both at once. I just had some rubber bands holding them together. Okay, here we go, hydrogen. Whew, we got it, huh? Big pop for hydrogen? Okay, that was exciting. All right, one more. Oops, I broke my match. Okay, oxygen. Here we go. Oh, it's got a little bit of... I see, so it's just burning in the tube. It's a cool color. Ow. Yeah. All right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was super fun. <laughs> Great, so we learned. Now we learned. And uh, that experiment is in this book, The Illustrated Guide to Home Chemistry Experiments. And